Yeah, Josh thought he was going to be doing this for me. Didn't work out that way. Josh was a stand-up guy. He uh, had a big heart. I know the girls looked up to him. He was always a caretaker, and I think that's one of the things that, that made him a highly motivated and a very effective non-commissioned officer, because his men came first. The Army was pretty much Josh's safe place. It was somewhere that he, he enjoyed he, uh, uh, the esprit de corps. Uh, camaraderie and then the dedication. He idolized my father, who was a staff sergeant in the Second World War, and Josh's aspiration was to achieve the same rank that his granddad had, which he did. You know, that was something that uh, meant a lot to him. When they rotated back to the States, I spoke to Josh the night before the hood shooting, and he sounded like he had won the lottery. I don't think I've ever heard so much joy in his voice. He couldn't wait to come home. It was a horrific attack. Armed with handguns, the shooter entered the processing center. On an ordinary November afternoon, the post became a combat zone. Hassan fired several shots uh, at my son. He shot through the door. Well, Josh dove to keep from being shot. He thought he'd been hit. Ultimately, they uh, took him to Darnall Medical and uh, he had uh, separated his shoulder, which they repaired surgically. That's the greatest, one of the greatest shocks of all of this. the disbelief that the shooter could turn an American military installation within the confines of the United States of America at Fort Hood, Texas, could turn that into a battlefield. I don't know how you could call it anything but terrorism. One of the things that Josh and I had talked about when he went in, I said, you know, well, what happens if something, if something bad happens, he goes, they'll have my back. And they didn't, and that weighed on him. All of us, better part of the Fort Hood shooting, have been left behind. And it hurts. You have, have been cast aside by the military that you swore an oath to, by the country that you swore to protect and defend, and denied what is rightfully yours, all for political gain. That's a level of despair that's beyond the words of description. I was told that you know, Josh was the poster child for PTS. We just tried to, to encapsulate him and, and put him in the center, love him the best we could. And ultimately, you know, his, his demons just, they, he couldn't get over the fact that he, he took his life on February the, the 13th of 2013. 39 months after the shooting, we had spent 39 months trying to do whatever we could to keep him on this side of the grass with very little help. Uh, very little help from the folks at the VA or the, you know, the government. Um, and he fell through a lot of the cracks. Had them all in uh, alphabetical order. Well, after Josh's death, I started in March of 2013. I decided that I would reach out to every single member of Congress, the 113th Congress, with some simple questions related to what happened to my son. 550 letters, every House member, every senator, 
I received a total of eight responses. After that, I decided that I would go to DC and I went door to door. And that's when I really started to see the, the level of indifference. I attended the trial and what I learned was that my son was never represented. He did not exist. In May of 2013, you know, I get a call from the chief prosecutor late one evening and he tells me that my son's in good hands. He's being monitored. The Army's keeping close tabs on him. It's three months after his funeral. And it's just shocking. For all intents and purposes, the Army forgot about him. The House and Senate have agreed on this legislation that, the, that they will allow these heroes to receive the Purple Hearts and make them eligible for the benefits they deserve. The victims and their families will soon receive justice and closure. And I found out that my son was not gonna be included on the list of those that would be considered for, for medals. Uh, I felt abandoned, I felt betrayed. I felt that once again, my son was left behind. There's casings, there's bullet holes. It, there's all sorts of evidence that was collected by Army CID, the Texas Rangers, and the FBI. What is enough? Yeah, the after action reports all substantiate what my son said. So why, why didn't they get this right? They really did the due diligence to look at all the evidence. And they came to the understanding that yes, that Josh did meet the criteria and this is what they needed to do. I had no idea that someone could just arbitrarily come in there and toss it in the trash. And then when I reached out to get clarification on that, because I don't have all the facts, and if someone can sit down and explain to me why, you know, I, it's okay, I can take bad news. And I'm told that they don't have to do that. They don't have to explain anything to me. What does anybody have to lose to give Josh his honor and to call this an act of terrorism? What the hell else is it? I don't know what the government, DOD, DA, and the FBI have to lose. I don't understand the motivation behind this conspiracy of silence. In a country where no one stood up for my son, you know, to finally have someone that's willing to do that, yeah, this is, a, this is the right thing to do. Thank God for the likes of Judicial Watch. I, I think they are the only organization that has followed through to expose the truth of what happened on November 5th, 2009. I think they are a godsend. They're our last hope. I do this for my granddaughter, you know. I would hope that someday that Purple Heart will be hers and that she'll have something that she can look at and say, you know, my dad's been gone for a long time. He volunteered to defend our freedom. He was, he was a pretty good guy. You know, that's, that's, that's it. Just give them the recognition that they're due.